In the previous lecture, we used Minikube to deploy a sample application to verify that we had our local Kubernetes cluster installed properly. By now, you're probably wondering, what exactly is the application that we deployed? How does Kubernetes know which Docker image to pull? How does it know what to do with that Docker image? How does it know how the Docker image works together? How does it know how it scales? And how does it know how it fails? These are all very good questions. We'll start at the beginning, your first Kubernetes application, a very simple deployment of the Tomcat application server. We'll look at how deployments are described and how we can deploy them to Kubernetes. So what does a Kubernetes application look like? Remember, deployments are the central metaphor for what we consider apps or services within Kubernetes. Deployments are described as a collection of resources and references. Deployments tell Kubernetes what Docker containers are interesting to us, describes a little bit about them and how they work together, what's required to keep them healthy, and what to do when they may become unhealthy. Deployments can take many forms based on the type of service being deployed. Whatever form they take, they're usually described in a YAML format. You can store this deployment in a file for replication across many Docker containers across many Kubernetes systems. However complicated they get, ultimately, deployments simply describe the containers used in an application, how they work together, and the care and feeding of them. Deployments, as you can imagine, can get relatively sophisticated for complicated applications, but let's keep it simple and start with something small and understandable. A deployment of the Tomcat application server. In this example, we'll deploy the Tomcat app server using the official Docker image. Our key tasks will be like any deployment you might plan, no matter how small or how large. First, we'll define the deployment what containers we use, what services those containers might offer, and where they come from. Then, we'll expose the services to the world. What TCP ports and what HTTP services are defined in the containers and where to reach them. Finally, we'll take that configuration information and we'll deploy it to our cluster. The first step is to define the deployment. The most simple deployment in Kubernetes is a single pod. Remember, a pod is an instance of a Docker container. Deployments can have any number of pods required to get the job done. They can range from one instance of a single image, like we're doing today, and grow to hundreds of images of different types. The most simple deployment simply has one pod. No redundancy, no separation of services, just one pod deployed to Kubernetes. The source files for both this lecture and subsequent lectures are available on GitHub. If you're familiar with how to use Git, GitHub, and associated tools, feel free to clone the repository on your own. If you're unfamiliar how to do it, follow along and we'll download the appropriate tools and do it together. The GitHub repository is available via the web at github.com forward slash JLE tutorial forward slash Kubernetes dash demo. If you're going to clone this on your own, feel free to go ahead, clone it, and join us in the rest of the example. Otherwise, open a web browser and head to this URL. There are a few ways that you can access this source code and save it to your computer. We'll use GitHub Desktop. Perhaps you have it installed and perhaps you don't. Whether or not you do, click on the green Clone or Download button where you're presented with a choice. You are free to download a zip file of the repository, which doesn't require any extra software other than unzip in order to access the files. We're going to choose Open in Desktop. When you click Open in Desktop, it will prompt you, if you don't already have it downloaded, to download the GitHub Desktop program. In this case, we'll download it for Mac OS. Once the download is completed, open the file, install it appropriately for your given operating system, and open the program. Once GitHub Desktop is installed and open, go to the File menu and click Clone Repository. Ensure that the URL tab is selected. Choose a local path 
to where to download the files. And type or paste the URL of the repository. Remember, that's http colon slash slash github.com forward slash jlee tutorial forward slash kubernetes dash demo. Click clone and this will copy the repository files to your system. Those files are now available at the directory you selected initially in this dialog. Let's start with the text editor open with a blank deployment.yaml file. We'll define a deployment so we can send it off to our Kubernetes cluster to understand how deployments and pods work. Now would be a great time to locate the files we most recently cloned from the GitHub repository and open the file named deployment.yaml in the introduction to Kubernetes forward slash your first k 8 as app directory. The goal of the deployment.yaml file is to provide Kubernetes with the basic information of what the application needs to do, the resources required to accomplish it. There's a wide variety of robust tools available to define how pods fail, how pods stay healthy, and what to do when they're unhealthy. We'll go over the most important aspects of the deployment YAML file. If this looks a little intimidating, don't worry. There are only a few aspects of this which are key to understand at the moment. We're going to go in depth in future lectures about items like metadata, labels, selectors, and the like. Right now, the important things to note are the image name, the number of replicas, the container port, and the name of the application. We'll go through each of these individually. We'll explore the other items in depth in future lectures. Right now, the key items to review and retain are the ones that we're about to go over. For now, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to define a deployment named tomcat-deployment that only has one replica, so one instance of one Docker image. This image is named tomcat version 9.0. If we don't specify an external repository, Kubernetes will default to the public Docker Hub. Finally, we let Kubernetes know that the Docker container Tomcat version 9.0 exposes a port 8080. This is where the Tomcat application server will listen by default on the Apache supplied image. You might remember from our previous lecture that we have to expose any ports in our deployment to the outside world. For that, we'll use the kubectl command, similar to what we did when we were testing minikube. We'll use the kubectl expose deployment command to expose our service, named tomcat-deployment, as a node port. Don't worry about the various types of services and what they might be. In this instance, Node port tells Kubernetes that we'd like to export or expose the container port of 8080 in our previous file to the external world on an external port. Let's see the details of how this works. First, let's start by verifying the deployment.yaml is proper. Looks good. We'll use the kubectl apply command to take the directives from this file and apply it to our cluster. You'll see that our deployment was successfully created. The next step is to expose the deployment as a service. The kubectl expose command will create the actual service and explore it to the world. In order to find what port it was created on, we'll use the mini kube service with the name of the service dash dash url command this will provide us with the url including the port number that we can access our given exposed service on copying this url we'll use curl to access our local service as you can see we'll get the html of the default apache tomcat welcome page we can verify using this tool that our service is indeed working Let's review what we did here. First, we defined a deployment.yaml file that indicated what image to use and what services that image exposed. Then, 
we mapped those exposed services from the container to the outside world. Next, we asked Minikube what port it chose to expose to the outside world. Finally, we verified using the curl command that we indeed could access our service at the given port.